Right guys, welcome to Ideal Home Show. Um, my name is JJ Goodman, I'm from London Cocktail Club. London Cocktail Clubs. We've got a few bars in town. Um, we host a few master classes. We're in the company called Best in Glass who invited us to come down today. Uh, they supply cocktail equipment to people's houses to give you guys the opportunity to mix at home. See, now we're gonna come around to the first drink of the day. So when it comes to Christmas, we tend to wake up in the morning and the first meal, I don't know if everyone has like a classic first meal, but we tend to have salmon, scrambled eggs and toast. Any, any fans of that? Is that like a staple? Yeah, there's a lot of nodding going on, good. So with that, the first drink of the day tends to be a... A Buck's Fizz, exactly. So a Buck's Fizz, orange juice and Prosecco, how far wrong can you go with that? Not too far but we decided to have a little bit of a play around with it and rework it a little bit. So we've come up with a, with a marmalade fizz. It's a bit of a twist on a quite famous um, classic uh, called a breakfast martini, kind of meats, a Buck's fizz, um, but tastes great. And it's got loads of flavor inside it. I'm a massive, massive ambassador of this drink. Um, and it goes a little something like this. So I'm gonna start with uh, my tin. Again, Best in Glasses website will be on your uh, in your brochures. If there's any cocktail equipment that you need that you don't have, they sell most of the essentials there. Pretty much all the essentials, every single essential there and change. I can just feel the eyes burning in the back of my head. Um, so to do this, uh, to the tin, I'm just gonna add uh, a bar spoon. In fact, do you wanna start sending the samples out? You thirsty now? Yeah, we get the samples out. So one bar spoon, of the marmalade. I've used a thick cut marmalade. I like thick cut marmalade because it's got a lot more flavor, I find. But other marmalades that are lighter tend to be quite light in flavor. Second thing we're gonna add is the, uh, is the gin. In homage to Minan, Marion. 25 mils of gin into there. Once that's thrown down, I'm gonna go with a bit of acacia honey. Two reasons really why I'm using acacia honey. One is because it's got quite a light flavour and I like honey. One is because it's honey. Uh, and again, it kind of, when I talk about breakfast cocktails, honey and marmalade, I just have a, I enjoy that, adding those kind of styles of ingredients that you know in. Um, the second is because of the, uh, the orange juice. Again, when we talk about things that you need for cocktails, you know, do you need to spend you know, 30 quid a bottle just for a bottle of vodka to create a cocktail is, is a question that, you know, I get asked. But when it comes to the orange, I use a concentrate orange today, A, because it's more accessible, B, because it's a little bit cheaper, C, because it has like, a, like, it is quite acidic compared to like a freshly pressed orange. A freshly pressed orange will be sweeter. So the occasional honey kind of compensates for that. You, you're back in the ball game. So I'm gonna splash of the orange in, about 20 mils. Uh, they're all in there. I'm going to give them a stir now quickly. It's really important to stir honey uh, in with like an acid like lemon or lime or alcohol just because it will break it down a little bit. If you put ice straight into the top of it, naturally the, the coldness of the ice will freeze the honey up around it. You won't get any flavour or sweetness from the honey. So give it a little stir. Once it's mixed in, it's absolutely perfect to shake and that's what comes next. Shaking cocktails, fairly simple if you do it every day, uh, not so simple if it's your first time. Do we have any volunteers or do we have any people who would like to stitch up their friends? We got one here, what's your name darling? Alex, get a round of applause for Alex please. Hey I love. Right. It's quite simple. We shake, throw one side and back, and it's the throwing of the ice. And if you get in a rhythm, it should be really nice and easy. Hold the top and the bottom of the tin when you do it. Do not hold it from the sides. It is essential that you listen to that piece of advice. I've got the outfit on for it as well, have an eye if it goes wrong. No, you're right. Hold it from the sides, see how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, top and bottom. Throw, 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 throw. 
That's not, that's not too bad, really. Milking it now. Perfect, mate. Job done. You all right? Yeah. Alex, everybody. So I'm going to stir this down. Well, stir it down. I'm going to pour it. I'm using a coupe glass. Uh, you can use a flute, you can use a wine glass. I think a lot of people kind of get a bit uh, protective over what glass I should use. Oh, I must have a martini glass to serve a martini in. Um, if it's good booze, I think you can drink it out of anything. That's kind of a rule I'm trying to impose. If you get quite excited about mixing drinks and you want to start spending some money on it, go for it. Um, so I'd be happy to, to take your money. Um, but for the time being, we're just getting used to mixing. Just like get comfortable with mixing before you start to worry too much about the presentation has to have you know, some form of like rose petal float on every drink, you know? So I'm gonna half fill this. This batch will probably do about two drinks. Uh, I'm using a coupe glass. I'm a big fan of the old coupes, uh, especially for sparkling drinks like this one. Obviously we talk that you know, it doesn't hold the bubbles as well. But when you're talking about something like a Bellini or a, a Fizz in general, you're not gonna have the bubbles hold forever. So just enjoy it. Throw it up, it should come up like a bit of a cappuccino. I'm trying not to spill it. Top it up. When it comes to peeling uh, lemons, a lot of people jump on, get the best knife out and try to like slowly go around it. In the bar industry, we don't do that. We use like a standard potato speed peeler. It's not that glamorous, but it gets the job done really quickly. So top to tail, it's gonna fly off and you're gonna get mostly skin. There's the white bit on the back, which we refer to as the pith. The pith is known to be quite bitter. So we tend not to want to use that so much. And again, it's just a bit sexier. So it's a little bit more bitter, but really, it's, it, it's just gonna give a nice finish to the drink. I'm gonna squeeze that over the top of the drink. If you can just see the oils spray across the top, they're really nice and floral, kind of that classic like lemon style flavor. I give it a twist, a rub, and I'm in. So that's a really simple, simple way of making this drink, which I think you should have ready, mate. I think you've earned it. Woo! Everyone's very clappy today, this is good. <laughs>